last lectures about the first part of electromagnetic induction. In the lectures, we will continue to continue. Okay. So, uh, at last we left uh, in the topic of induction, that is self-induction. Now, in the self-induction of a solenoid in okay. So, we just consider a solenoid. Solenoid is nothing but a coil uh, in a wrapped in a form of a cylindrical pattern is called as a solenoid. Right. So, we will just give a dimensions of the solenoid. That is, length of the solenoid as n and the area of cross-section of the solenoid is a and the number of turns is said to be n. Uh, it is connected to a battery uh, and then a connecting key is connected. Okay. Uh, so, some uh, EMF with an EMF. So, current flows through the circuit. Okay. So, current flows through the circuit. Uh, we know that whenever there is a current flows, there will be a magnetic field around the coil. So, since we know that uh, solenoid acts as a magnet. Okay. Solenoid acts as a bar magnet. So, I mean, uh, solenoid is uh, equivalent to the top. Solenoid is equivalent to the top of uh, bar magnet. Okay. So, now, uh, what is the magnetic field around the solenoid? So that is a big question. So this thing we have been calculated in the last chapter. That is B equal to mu naught times n i by how l. So it is a B equal to mu naught times n i by l. Since we can also express the same magnetic field in a different form. That is mu naught times small n i. Uh, what is the small n? What is that small n? Small n is called as term density. It is called as term density. So, what is mean by turn density? It is nothing but total number of turns per unit length. So, it is called as turn density. So, we can also express the capital N in this form. That is, capital N is equal to small n times of L. In, uh, since self inductance of a solenoid is given by L is nothing but N B A by I. So, this is calculated when current is said to be constant through the circuit. So, when current is said to be constant. Okay, constant through the circuit. So, if you substitute uh, B instead of this factor, we will get the result as L is equal to uh, N times of mu naught uh, N I by L by I and then here is said to be A. Okay. So, we can calculate, I mean we can neglect I and I. So, it is nothing but mu naught N square A by L. So, this is said to be self inductance of a so, we know. so, this is in terms of turns, total number of turns. What is the expression uh, for turn density? Since we know that capital N is equal to small n times of L, so we can express that this, that is mu naught, uh, small n times the capital, I mean small n times L, the whole square, A divided by L. So, it is given by the relation mu naught times L, small n square, L square by A by L. So, therefore, L is said to be mu naught times N square, A and L. So, this is said to be self inductance of a solenoid. When uh, there is a arc, the uh, medium in between them is said to be arc. Okay. So the medium in between is said to be arc medium. What if what what if a material is inserted in between the solenoid? Okay. So how to calculate the same factor? Let us consider like this. A solenoid is there, uh, some current I constant current flows through the solenoid. How the response is there? Then whenever we insert a material of permeability mu, then we know the relation that is relative to permeability of material is given by permeability of the medium divided by permeability of free space. Okay. So, from here we can conclude that permeability is nothing but permittivity of free space times relative permittivity. So, then we can conclude the expression that is as therefore, therefore n is equal to mu times n square a l. So, this is your self inductance when the material is inserted. Okay. So, this can also be represented like this. L is equal to mu naught mu r n square a times L. So, this is said to be uh, self inductance of a solenoid when uh, material with permeability is inserted. Uh, this is expression when permeability, I mean, when, whenever there is an air medium in between the solenoid. Okay. So, next topic is uh, energy stored in an inductor. So, <coughs> first of all, an inductor okay, of inductance L, that is nothing but a solenoid of inductance L. So, what is the role of this L? So, what is the role of this L? Role is nothing but, so we know that resistance R, that is the resistor with the resistance. So, the role of the resistance is said to be opposes current. Opposes current. Then, what is the role of that inductance L? Yeah. So, this role is said to be opposes change in current. So, change in I. So, this is the role of inductance and then uh, nothing but uh, opposes the test current and this is said to be change of current. 
so <coughs> because of this uh, energy is developed between or uh, around the inductor so it's stored in the inductor okay in the form of magnetic field so how to calculate that energy stored so for that we have to consider an rl circuit rl uh, dc circuit rl dc circuit so what is rl dc circuit a circuit a simple circuit with a resistor and an inductor okay so uh, a resistor of resistance r and an inductor of inductance l connected in series to a power supply as well as a key to a variable resistor in the circuit so variable resistor is called as a resistor a key and then a em okay so once the key is on that is uh, current i flows through the resistor similarly there will be a voltage drop across the resistor that is a v of r and then voltage drop across the inductor is equal to v of l so according to kripshaw's laws uh, we know that summation of emf and then summation of current times resistance is equal to be zero so this is a kripshaw's kvl that is kripshaw's voltage law so we can calculate the voltage equation that is uh, positive e so that is we are moving in this in the cycle like that anti clockwise sort of clockwise direction so it is plus e minus of v of r and then v of l is equal to be zero okay so we know that what is v of r it is current flows through the resistor of resistance that is voltage drop across the resistance so it is expressed that uh, it is e minus of i times r and then it is l times of di by dt is equal to be zero that is a emf induced uh, in between the inductor so that is the voltage drop across the same inductor okay so if you rearrange the equation we will get e is nothing but i times of r plus l di by dt so we got a emf equation so that is there are two parts in that equation one is said to be a resistive part and one is said to be an inductive part so ir is said to be a resistive part resistive part and then uh, this part is said to be an inductive part so we are neglecting simply neglecting the resistive part and we are learning about the inductive part because the energy stored in an inductor in the magnetic field so <coughs> energy is said to be l of di by dt okay so we know that uh, it's what is the power to store the energy power is nothing but work done by time or it is a d uh, w of dt since we know that how much work we did that much energy will be stored in the inductor so that is nothing but it is de by dt okay so in an electrical circuit the same power can also be expressed in this form that is e times of current i okay so if we substitute in the above equation we will get the power equation that is p equal to Uh, what is the e of input? You know, it is nothing but l times of di by dt times i. Okay. So <coughs> if we make some rearrangement, we will get the result. Okay. So that is in this side. Uh, it is dw by dt. It is nothing but l i times of di by dt. Okay. So this equation implies that is dw is to be l i and di. So if we integrate this above equation. We will get the energy that is work done by the external battery to store that energy in an inductor. So that is, if we integrate over the limit, we will get W equal to half of L times of I square. Okay. So this much of work is done to store energy in an inductor. So that is, work done is equal to that of the energy stored. So since it is a magnetic energy, it is expressed by the term called B. So therefore, magnetic energy stored is nothing but U of B is equal to half of L i square. Okay, so this is half of L i square. So now we can calculate another term called. Uh, this is an energy stored in the inductor. What will be the energy density? So similarly, like mass, mass density, energy density is also that. What is energy density? So energy density. So it is energy density. So energy density is expressed by the relation, uh, or what is the definition of it? It is U of b. It is expressed by this term called U small u of b. So it is nothing but amount of energy stored in a unit volt, a unit box. Okay. So it is said to be U of b is nothing but U of b by b. Okay. So we know that it is a half L i square. So it is said to be half of L i square divided by v. Again, uh, in the, in the last part, we have calculated self inductance of a solenoid. Since that uh, inductor is said to be a solenoid, so we have to sub substitute this equation. Since L is equal to uh, it is a mu mu naught times the n square a times l and then magnetic field of the solenoid is said to be equal to mu naught times n i so 
by substituting these two equations, we will get n and g stolen and n pair is said to be half of d square by mu naught. So this equation is implies by substituting these two results in the above equation, we will get uh, n and g stolen and n pair is said to be half of d square by mu naught. Last topic is self inductance. Now the next topic is said to be mutual inductance. Uh, there is a there is a meaning. Self means it induces itself. The solenoid induces itself is known as self inductance. Maybe we are considering two solenoids. First solenoid induces the second solenoid is called as mutual inductance. So for this we have to consider a two solenoids. Okay. So first there will be a solenoid uh, connected to a battery, connected to a battery as well as E, a rheostat, and respective circuits. Okay. So E and then a battery. Okay. So <coughs> another solenoid is that is connected to a galvanometer to just to detect a current flow. Okay. So we are just connecting to, to a galvanometer. Okay. So initially the galvanometer shows a zero deflection, so it should be like this. Okay. So this is a galvanometer. So to differentiate that, we are naming the solenoids as primary, uh, primary, and then this is said to be the secondary solenoid. Okay. So <coughs> so this primary solenoid has some dimensions. That is number of turns as n one, um, and then inductance, self inductance as l one, and then current flows through the thing is said to be I1 and then area is said to be A1. Similarly, for a secondary solenoid, we are just giving the dimension that is number of turns as N2 and uh, so similarly there will be a length, uh, length of the solenoid and then uh, L2 is said to be self inductance of this solenoid and uh, I2 current if, if induces means there will be an I2 current and then uh, area of the cross section. Also magnetic field is around the solenoid is said to be B1 and here after induction magnetic field is said to be B2. So these are the dimensions of the solenoid. Uh, and then flux induced by the solenoid is said to be taken as phi1 and flux is said to be phi2. So since R is in between the solenoid, R gap is in between the two solenoids. So therefore we are considering that phi1 is greater than that of phi2. Some part of energy will be lost in this beam. So definitely phi2 won't be greater than that of phi1. Okay. Since we know that uh, by the part of induction that is n times of phi is proportional to current. Okay. So we are calculating the flux in the secondary solenoid. Secondary solenoid is said to be phi2. So this is phi2 and number of turns is said to be n2. Uh, on behalf of current flows in the first solenoid, uh, the flux is calculated in the second solenoid. So therefore it is said to be i1. So that proportionality is removed by the means of constant that is n2 phi2 is equals to i1. That proportionality is called as coefficient of mutual inductance that is m of 1 2. What is the meaning of m 1 2? m 1 2 is said to be uh, mutual inductance of mutual inductance of first solenoid with respect to first solenoid with respect to second. So induction states is uh, sorry, this is two one actually. Uh, second solenoid we are calculating mutual inductance of second solenoid due to first. So this is going to be two one with one. Okay. So this is mutual inductance of second solenoid with respect to first solenoid. So <coughs> we can elaborate the factors that is. What is the that's n n two times phi two? But n two times phi two is said to be uh, it is n two phi is said to be b and a. So we have to give a terminology. What is b? Uh, it is magnetic field of the first solenoid in the area two. So it is said to be b one and b two. So what is the magnetic uh, field of a solenoid? It is said to be mu naught times uh, number of turns. Uh, so it is said to be n one and then current uh, flows there. Uh, through the solenoid is said to be I1 by L and then area is said to be A2. So, so that we will get the result like this that is which implies that M21 I1 is said to be N1 N2 this mu naught I1 by L times A2. So this I1 and I1 getting cancelled. Our M121 is said to be uh, this mu naught times N1 N2 uh, A2 by L. So this is your mutual inductance of second solenoid with respect to first solenoid. Similarly, we can also uh, do the same in a reverse format. That is by varying uh, magnetic field in this solenoid, we can calculate the mutual inductance of first solenoid. So that is expressed by the relation n times of i is proportional to i. So that is i2 currents flows in this part, it induces, respectively it induces a, uh, I mean change of flux is expressed here, it induces a EMF that produces a current. So therefore it is said to be phi1 and n. So again n1, phi1 is equal to m of, uh, it is a 1, 2, because initially it is 
2 with respect to 1. Now, 1 with respect to 2, it is said to be 1, 2, and then I will. Okay. So, we have to name the factor. That is, what is a m? 1, 2 is said to be 1 with respect to 2. So, mutual inductance of 1 with respect to 2. So, that is, now we can elaborate that part. That is, n1 pi 1, n1 pi 1 is said to be n1 times phi is said to be magnetically times a. That is plus. So, it is b times a. So, it is b times a. So, what is a b? Magnetic field in the second zone due I mean on this area. So it is said to be B1 and A. So it is nothing but N1. What is B1? Magnetic field due to zone point 1. Oh, sorry. So this is 2 and this is 1. Ah, magnetic field due to zone point 2. It is mu naught times N2 I2 current flows in a length. So it is said to be A1. So it is nothing but mu naught times N1 N2 I2 A1 by L. So this is N1 and 5 1. This is n1 and phi 1. Now this equation implies implies that m of 1 to i2 is said to be mu naught times n1 n2 i2 a1 divided by l. This i2 and i2 getting cancelled. Our m 1 2 is said to be mu naught times n1 n2 and a1 by l. Okay. So so this is our resulting part. <coughs> so we can observe these two equations. That is, we can conclude some. Data. That is, we are considering that a of the solenoids are both are equal. Then we can say that, then we, which implies that m12 is also equal to m21, that is, it is said to be mu0 times n1, n2, a common area, so divided by l. So that is the induction, it mutually indexes 1 induces 2, 2 also induces 1. So this is a conclusion we get from this topic. So this is said to be mutual inductance. Also, we can write a mutual inductance equation with respect to individual self inductance, that is, it induces itself within a self induction of L1 and it is in, induces itself in the self induction of L2. Then, what is the connecting factor between this factor M and this L1 and L2? It is said to be uh, M is nothing but K times root of L1 and L2. So, what is that K? It is said to be coupling factor. How, in what, and in what fashion it is coupled? It means uh, we are arranged in a straight line. We can also arrange like this. We can also arrange coaxially. We can also one above, one below. Like this, we can arrange. That is, this K is called as coupling factor. So, what is the what are the values of the coupling factor? So, the range of K is lies between K lies between or it is a greater than zero and less than one. So, this is a range of the coupling. Uh, we can get a special case from this. If K is equal to one, we can say it is a perfect coupling. What does it mean? That is, phi one is also equal to phi two. So, there is no uh, energy loss. That is, a, if without an R gap, this, I mean, in initial case, we are considering that there is an R gap, that is, phi 1 is greater than phi 2. If there is no R gap, this phi 1 also equals to phi 2. So, this is called as perfect coupling. 